This is Kapoho, Hawaii, was Kapoho, nearly six years ago. Nobody lives here anymore. Lava wiped out everything. Goma in Congo, a couple of years later, hundreds of homes destroyed by molten rock. And this is the Canary Island of La Palma. Thousands fled as neighborhoods were engulfed. And now we have Iceland. Currently in a state of emergency, lava is flowing. Big swaths of the country considered at very high risk. The purple zone is where lava can burst out of the ground without warning. And zone four at the bottom in red, thousands of people live there. Grindavik is a fishing village, now evacuated, too dangerous to stay. And so they watch and defend against the country's fourth lava eruption in three months. I've heard lava described as liquid doom because it is both destructive and unstoppable. When it flows, it is unyielding. But why? Why can't we build walls like we do against water or build trenches like we do against fire? And did we at one point really think bombing lava was going to work? Yes, yes we did. Lava tends to follow the path of least resistance, which usually means the steepest path, because let gravity do the work, right? But anything that's in the way is either going to get knocked aside or surrounded or buried or lit on fire because, well, this is powerful stuff. The thing is, this is really just corn syrup, corn starch, a little bit of red dye mixed in. You really have to imagine this hot and heavy. The estimates I've seen are that lava in Iceland is among the hotter types of lava we see worldwide, and that we might be talking more than a thousand degrees Celsius. Boof is, uh, I don't know, 10 times hotter than a normal oven. It's so hot that I have been walking next to lava flows at, at quite a distance, at about 100, 200 yards just walking on the side and my, the side of my face getting like sunburned from, from just the radiation at a big distance. Basically, if you stick your hand in 1000 degrees centigrade lava, your hand is going to be barbecued very, very rapidly, unfortunately. So right away, there's a danger to any equipment and people you might think of using. But the way that heat dissipates can also make the flow more difficult to contain. You see how the lava itself is a fluid, but there's always that solid crust on the outside. Oh, John. Oh, oh. oh. oh my gosh. Baby oh, cool. That's the outermost lava cooling. Because remember, lava is just rock that's so hot it's been liquefied. When it cools, it becomes solid again. And those solid channels can create their own barriers that redirect flow. So why can't you just dig a big trench, redirect lava sideways? Okay, you can dig a trench to take the lava into a given, a given direction. But if you're dealing with situation like we are dealing with, one eruption after another, you know, after the first eruption, the channel is, or, or the trench is full. And then we would have to take another trench and another trench. And even the longest trench is going to have to compete with where the lava was previously trying to go. Remember, if the lava was flowing your way to begin with, it's probably because you're downhill. Now, digging a trench can work temporarily, right? You're digging a pocket of lower ground and you're trying to channel that lava this way, perpendicular to whatever direction it was going. But even if the lava doesn't eventually kind of fill that in by hardening into a bridge over that trench, we're talking about an incredibly difficult, incredibly expensive engineering challenge. And it's not a one and done, right? Given how the flow of lava is constant and you can have eruption after eruption. The other thing to realize about lava is that it's really dense. So this glass of water that I have is pretty manageable to lift, right? Water has a density of one gram per cubic centimeter. So your average glass doesn't even hold a pound of water. A bucket of water 
so we have something <laughs> that's really heavy like this this is i think a 20 liter bucket three quarters full maybe that's 30 40 pounds of water but lava remember this is liquefied rock it can be up to three times denser heavier than water twice as dense as concrete so if you imagine on a much larger scale, thousands and thousands of kilograms of molten rock forcing its way across a field or down a mountainside, anything in its way will be bulldozed out of the way. It totally destroys property. So whatever is on the path, and the path tends to follow topography, so it will go on the lower part of the topography, basically following what water, roughly what water will follow, it will destroy anything on that path. When I read that there was an attempt nearly a hundred years ago to bomb lava into oblivion, I really did think it must be a joke. But no, George S. Patton, before he became the US general we learn about in history books, he planned a bombing run in Hawaii when a volcano there erupted in 1935. I think that at the time they were looking at ways to divert lava from a certain path into one that would cause less damage. The targets were lava tubes, which are like superhighways for lava, encased and insulated in a hard outer shell. Bombing them, the theory went, would be like taking out the highway. Plus, you spread the lava out. By bombing the, the levees, the, the sides of the, the lava channel, and letting the lava break out of it, uh, you will cool the lava faster and uh, the lava front will have a, a larger area. So you will both slow down the lava flow and the speed of the cooling. Except if the lava doesn't stop flowing, you're not really solving the problem. It's not a long-term solution because once that gets overflowed, it can go into places that might be causing more damage. So again, the, the problem with bombing uh, was the lack of control on what the lava was going to do afterwards. Another plan, almost half a century later, in Iceland this time, involved using giant hoses from a flotilla of boats to blast lava with ice-cold seawater to protect a small island community. Again, the idea was to cool the lava down, which should freeze it in place. And it kind of worked. Maybe the harbor that they were protecting survived. But was it because they froze and diverted enough lava, or was it more because the eruption ended? All these years later, kind of hard to tell if pumping water was an effective strategy. But to try to pull that off again, you would need lava that moves slowly enough and a virtually limitless supply of water. Crews used billions of liters of water. The defensive wall hastily built in recent days did its job. Where Iceland seems to be seeing the most success nowadays is not in trying to stop the lava, but simply steering it, diverting it away from villages and key infrastructure. They do that with these great big walls of earth. Hundreds of bulldozers, trucks, and excavators to build them really high, many, many meters tall. In some cases, historically, dozens of meters tall. And they have to be built in such a way to allow the lava to travel elsewhere, rather than just piling up at the wall and then eventually overtopping it. Experts believe these barriers worked about two months ago, when lava from two fissures began a kind of slow march on Grindavik. Even though the southernmost fissure damaged a few buildings, said an engineer on site, the barriers held the majority of lava flow from the fissure north of the barriers. Only three homes were damaged. It's incredibly expensive. It's not cost effective from the economic point of view, but there's an emotional part uh, in which a government that shows people that they're prepared to protect their properties, even when their property is not worth a hundredth of what this they're going to spend. Of course, it's very expensive, expensive building these barriers. But eventually, if everything goes well, we will protect the town. At best, many geologists believe diverting lava is really just a delay tactic. You're buying yourself time until Mother Nature decides to turn the tap off. Because you can't really stop lava once it starts flowing. And often, the most cost-effective way of dealing with it is just to get out of the way. 